one of the really great applications of covariance matrices that we're going to see comes up in problems of prediction or estimation or tracking. This is a little deep, a little bit difficult, a bit advanced, but stick with me. This is a lot of fun. Let's say you've got something that you want to track and it's, whoa, it's off and it's gone. Where'd it go? There's some uncertainty about its state, meaning its position, its velocity, its orientation, pose, anything like that. Pack that into its state. And then what do we do? Well, one technique is to model that state in terms of a probability density to, to keep track of a whole bunch of different random variables, one for each coordinate of position, for each component of velocity, things like that. And then we keep track of the expectation and the covariance of that collection of random variables on the state. Now, this gets a bit technical. Stick with me here. The first thing that we need to do if we want to start doing uh, tracking and prediction, which is so important in things like self-driving vehicles, aeronautics, anything like that. The first thing that we want to do is to come up with a state update model that tells you how things change from one time step to the next. So let's say that right now I take all of my state variables and I pack them into a vector x of random variables. That's my expectation and my covariance right now, my mean and uncertainty. Now, when I look at it again in a minute, I'm going to have an updated state. Let's say that I have a model that predicts where I'm going to be. And that model is given by some nonlinear function f that takes my vector of random variables x to the updated vector of random variables. If I, if I know where I'm at now and I know the uncertainty of where I'm at now, that is, I know the present mean and the present covariance matrix, what happens at the next time step? Well, if f were a linear transformation, then we know how expectation and covariance change. So let's drop back to our understanding of what happens in the context of a linear transformation and then think about what we do if it's nonlinear. We know that if it's a linear transformation, the expectation is linear, the covariance is quadratic. Using that transformation, what do we do if we have a nonlinear state update model? Well, of course, of course, it's the same story that we've been telling all along. We use the derivative as a linearization of this nonlinear transformation. So we're going to say that under this nonlinear state update model f, the expectation of y is f of the expectation of x. You just move that forward by the nonlinear transformation. But the covariance matrix of y is obtained from the covariance matrix of x by pre-multiplying by the derivative of f, evaluated at the mean of x, and post-multiplied by the transpose of that derivative. That's the idea. That is how we're going to be able to keep track of state and uncertainty on that state, even under nonlinear update models. That's the big idea, and it's a little complicated to understand the first time you see it, but it's really a big idea.